It was in the summer of 1991. Myrtle Beach, Bike Week. You know, it's, it's probably the closest thing I've ever had to a religious experience. It's a pandemic today, and it's happening right in front of us. I don't know. I guess they, they just seemed cool. Four people of all walks of life, driven by obsession, love, hatred, and childlike fascination. What is it that connects these people? Our story begins millennia ago in ancient Egypt, when Queen Cleopatra, known for her aesthetic and sexual appeal, began a phenomenon we still witness today. Few are aware of her influence, but new hieroglyphs found deep within the catacombs of the Great Pyramids have revealed a history of a trend we thought to be only a recent cultural development. Join me now as we explore the tantalizing story of the Lower Back Tattoo. Cleopatra first utilized the allure of the lower back tattoo in gaining the affections of Roman conqueror Mark Antony. Stories of their notorious relationship soon led to the popularization of body modification throughout Europe. Spread across continents, almost without any sort of communication, it was as if it was this universal idea that was born into existence due to its absolute necessity for human culture. Joan of Arc, Madame Curie, Paula Dean. During the Renaissance, Michelangelo took four years to finish painting the Sistine Chapel. In comparison, he spent eight years perfecting a unicorn on Catherine de' Medici's lower back. First time I saw de' Medici's unicorn, I wept. Jerry Thompson operates the Lower Lumbar Lounge, an establishment where patrons only receive tattoos directly above the belt line. Jerry's passion for the style influenced him to only cater to a niche market, and the gamble has paid off. The most popular designs are probably meaningless Chinese characters wrapped in barbed wire. Then my friend Marissa showed up, and she was like, Candy, we need to go get some tatters. And I was like, oh my god, you're totally right. This one is for friendship. This one is for puppies and this one is for shopping. What she unfortunately doesn't know is that her Chinese characters literally translate to pulled pork sandwich. Sacagawea, Clara Barton, LeVar Burton. Harriet Tubman did not have one, but was an advocate for them. For me, it's, it's that connection. Uh, it's about the community, about making people happy, uh, seeing people smile when they pull their pants down. But not everyone shares Thompson's fervent love of this specialized artistry. Travis Grumman feels very differently. I don't know when the whole world decided to start inking themselves up like a bunch of pornographers, but I do know that 40% of my friends are against it. Do you know that in 2006, 36% of people were having a conversation about tattooing? And do you even know how many people in the 60s had a tattoo? While it's grown 4,000% in the last two years. Mr. Grumman has many homemade charts. They and other scientific projections show a future with even more elaborate stompings. There are two types of people on this earth that would get a tramp stamp. A slut, a sinner, and a slut. I had one simple request for Mr. Grumman. Give me the bad news. It's an abomination. And if we don't do something about it now, our own children are going to start being born with stamps. The future of the lower back tattoo is very bright. Uh, if you read in my new book, Lower Back to the Future, you'll see that we have a brave new world of LBTs that we're embarking upon. Japanese laboratories are coming out with scratch and sniff back tattoos. Um, they have some that change color, some that play music. Past, present, future, these are all places. Will the human hieroglyph continue? And if so, how will it evolve as past, present, and future collide? Will we be consumed in a brightly colored and fleshy pandemic? 
or will art continue to lead us to spirituality in our past, present and future? For me, only one of these questions matter. How does it look? 